Hello everybody, welcome to the Football Daily Weekly. Good to have you with us. Joining us on the show today, we have our regular Lawrence McKenna. Hey. Lovely to see you, my good man. And Jack <laughs> Reeve from Talk Norwich City. Hello, how you doing? On those my favourite talk. Absolutely. Good to have you, Jack. Best talk. Good to have good you. Good to have you. <laughs> right, indeed. Oh, he's having us now, apparently. Wow, <laughs> like Delia. Yes. He's having us. Yeah, yeah. You know, let's Where be are having you? all of you. Where are you? Um, we're going to talk yeah. about the five things we learned from the weekend's action. First up, Cristiano Ronaldo is the highest scorer in Real Madrid's La Liga history. 230 goals, beating Raul's 228 record. Five goals he scored against Espanyol, Jack. Five goals in one match. It's crazy, isn't it? I think stats don't really give him the respect he deserves. He's got over a goal a game ratio, which is incredible for mm -hmm. a striker. If a, if a striker scores 20 goals in 40 games in the Premier League, that's sort of regarded as a, as a top-class striker. Mm -hmm. Ronaldo scoring a goal a game plus. Five goals against the Espanyol is just ridiculous. <laughs> I, I, whenever I watch him, he just amazes me. He does things that no other man can do. He really is that good. Mm, he's, he's like Roy the Rovers, Lawrence, isn't he? Uh, yeah, he's Roy of Real <laughs> Madrid, isn't he? Um, because Real would be wrong. Yeah. Um, but he's he's he is good. Um, I'll give him that. Mm. Uh, what I would say with with Ronaldo is uh, he's also done it from not necessarily a striker's position. Mm. I know he plays number nine now, but before he was a seven, more out on the wing, mm -hmm. possibly looking to provide. So he was also providing assists with mm. that as well. So it wasn't just the goals, which is the record. Mm -hmm. It's that it's contrasted with all the other aspects of his play. Um, and I mean, maybe uh, we've spoken before about him being an almost Jordan-like figure for football. Michael in, Jordan. Yeah. yeah. Um, just to is there any, like, yes. in this day and age. Not, not, not Katie Price like yeah, figure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, and and that I, you know to some extent that affects the way that people perceive him because it it, um, it means that people almost take it as normality that he'll do that mm. because you know Michael Jordan did the same. It was like well it's just that's what he does. Yeah. But it within context that's incredible. It is. Um, and and some, not only that but it's not like he's just it's not Ruben van Nistelrooy esque which was fantastic but these are sort of epic technical goals which mm. require a different kind of. Um, mental ability, if you like, he's yeah. got a great physical ability. Yeah, I mean, Jack, we, you know, when when one dips into the uh, the, the history books of football, mm. you find players like you know Gerd Müller or somebody like that, incredibly impressive, mm. or um, uh, Eusebio. These types of yeah. players, unbelievable scoring records. Who, who, who did it? You know, in bygone eras now. But Cristiano Ronaldo, oh, of course, along with Messi, but, but but Ronaldo, we're focusing on at the moment. He's doing this now to the point of these records might never be broken. I, I mean, we always hope they are. You, you don't want everything to be um, stuck in, a, in, mm. in, in years gone by. But th this really is history in the making. I think the thing with Ronaldo is, is we don't really know just how good, mm. good he is at the moment. When he retires, we'll look back and go, look, we've got a cracking player. We had a cracking mm. player. But I think we're appreciating him enough at the moment. I know I don't watch much, much Spanish football, but when I do, it's either Barcelona or Real Madrid because I want to watch the best players. And I think the thing is, Lawrence brought it up a minute ago, is when even if Ronaldo scores a goal in a game, people go, oh, it's only a goal. It's a bit <laughs> yeah, disappointing. Right. Yeah. And it's crazy because he's built such high expectations mm. for himself. He's keeping having to better them and scoring five goals. People are going to have to go, well, he's going to have to score six, isn't he? What, Next game. What is strange, though, I mean, the difference between him and Michael Jordan is that Michael Jordan had a Bulls team built around him mm. and they empowered him to go on and win multiple championships. He's got the five rings. He's, you know, one of the greatest basketball players of all time. And he's remembered not only for his great technical ability, but the immense success that came with that. The irony would be that Ronaldo, he was somewhat the chosen one for Real Madrid because it was, well, they built, they basically bought him and it was like, right, well now we will go off on and win things. They've won one league championship since then. Maybe that's an achievement in the Barcelona era. They've won the Champions League once, getting La Decima. Maybe that's also an achievement in the current climate. What you would say is though, for what Real Madrid expect and what they want, they've almost not served him well enough. Do you know, I, I do know, you know what, what I mean, mean by that? I do, yeah. Um, and that's certainly how he would tell it. Yeah, <laughs> and you imagine that's how the biography will read. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, uh, but, that, but that's interesting, isn't it? That, mm. you know, this fantastic player, this Jordan-esque player who, you know, Michael Jordan had all the rings and he had all the great technical ability. He paired the two up and he had a team built around him, Scotty Pip and all those kind of guys. There was the, the beginnings of that, but you almost feel like, there's an irony there because Real Madrid think they have that and they think they're building it, but they don't. And he's still achieving a great amount, even though they haven't necessarily served it. Spot on, Lawrence. Spot on. Chelsea are in meltdown, everybody. Dearie me, gentlemen. Dearie me. They obviously had a bad start initially to the season. Do you think? And it's still continuing mm. um, against Everton. Naismith with a hat trick. Stephen Naismith. I think the brilliant thing about that was he didn't even start, did he? he yeah. Came on, he came on as a sub. Um, but. 
It's interesting to see because obviously Chelsea were sort of tipped for, for great things this year and currently they've got sort of relegation form. Um, I, I can't see that continuing. I'm sure Mourinho will turn this around, but it's a very interesting start. I think Mourinho... You don't think Chelsea will get relegated? <laughs> <laughs> get your bets on. Yeah. Um, but no, I think... Mourinho, he got a bit cocky for himself. He didn't make sort of a marquee sign and he left the, the Baba Rahman deal really late to get him. And I think he was so confident that this current team is good enough, he's sort of forgotten to sign players and improve. And sort of quietly, you've got the likes of Man City, even Man United, buying big players and improving and sort of and showing them up a bit. Do you think that's a point? I mean, Chelsea, they slightly lost a bit of momentum towards the end of last season. Obviously, they'd built up so much that it was reasonably comfortable and the other sides didn't really challenge them. But they seem to have been zapped of all their energy in the summer and they've come back and they look so sluggish. Mm. They started their pre-season late, mm. is what a lot of people are saying. But then they still should have caught up by now, right? Mm. Um, you would say that also that the weird end to last season where it was sort of it was done very early is quite strange. You also wonder... I, you know, I know City signed De Bruyne uh, but you almost think that would have been a great signing for Mourinho now, mm. wouldn't it? Because well, someone like that would be... To him, fe- yeah. yeah. And you feel like some of Mourinho's alienation of other people is now coming back to bite him a little bit. Um, Do you think that, that's, uh, that's a point? Because they signed so many players and then they spit out a few others that they have for a couple of games. Now don't need you. Salah and De Bruyne mm. and... Quadrado, perhaps, there's only a certain amount of players you can do this yeah. with. Well, yeah, it's all well and good doing that whilst you are at your top. But then, you know, you realise who your friends are or who your best players are when you begin to slip. And Mourinho is realising that to some extent because he's seeing some of his best players not putting in particularly convincing performances. Mm. I, think, I, mean, I think the thing I love is they've got 30 players out on loan at the moment and all the fans are going, well, we've got a very small squad this season. Well, you've got 30 players yeah. out on loan. Bring <laughs> some of them back. You know, yeah, they've, they've like They've got some decent players out and they're not bringing them back. It just seems a bit strange what their whole loan system is at the moment. And also you've got the likes of Branislav Ivanovic in there playing very poor football yeah. at the moment. But I think the thing with Mourinho is, is because he's been so good at Chelsea, I'm not sure if he's struggling to drop him because he's he remembers what Ivanovic was like, yeah. how good he was, and he's sort of struggling to he's drop. He's not sentimental like that though, is he? I'm Do not you, sure. I mean, I'm not sure. Extent, maybe he is a bit sentimental. It, it mm. seems like he might be mm-hmm. over the past sort of five games. I was reading a piece the other day by Jonathan Wilson about Barcelona and he was speaking about the youth development at Barcelona and how that served people so well and how that could only really be done through organic growth. Mm. And I found that, that was back in 2011, but he mm. happened to mention in the article Frank Arneson mm. and uh, Chelsea trying to build an academy and trying to bring people through. Where is that? Mm. That's a big question. I think that you know there's a huge spotlight on Mourinho here and he has spent a lot of money and for that reason we should question that. But then you also question in the previous way we were speaking about Ronaldo, has his club served him well? Or has he poorly led the club in the sense that he's led them for the short term and not necessarily built for the long term? And therefore they're suffering now because this three year Bella Gutmann thing, you know, maybe it's not serving them so well. Mm, do you see them turning it around soon? I think they will turn it around. I think Mourinho's got it up his sleeve. Um, but that's a very interesting point about the youth players. You've got one of the most successful FA Youth Cup teams there, the likes of Nathan Aki. What's happened to him? They mm. need a centre back. Where is he? That's right. Mm. There we are. Where um, are they? Lee? Oh, they're all asking that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, are they? Always asking. <laughs> where are you? Indeed. Where are they? Let us know in the comments where you think Chelsea are going to be soon. Anthony Martial is already an Old Trafford favourite, it would seem, Jack. Mm. What a goal on it, his debut. It was a fantastic goal, mm. wasn't it? That's um, just the start you want, especially with all that money. Good as Skirtle, wasn't it? <laughs> I, think, I think the money point is an interesting one. Was it 36, 38 million for him? But Rising to goodness knows 53, how much. Apparently. The thing is, in the current transfer market, is the big teams, money isn't really an object anymore. And if you want the best players, you need mm. to pay that kind of money. I think... All the Manchester United fans are over the moon with that signing, and then all of the other sort of jealous fans are saying, oh, that's far too much money for a youngster. This guy's clearly hasn't got much pressure on him. He's shown that with a fantastic goal in the opening week. Um, and I just think money isn't really an object, and if he can really kick on now, it's a, it's a shrewd bit of business. It's a crazy world we live in, according to Van Hal Lawrence. Yes. Which um, is why that fee was so extortionate. Uh, yeah, him and David Brent, both caught <laughs> in that, in a crazy maze. Um, I, I think... With that, you could definitely taper that point by saying Memphis didn't have such a good game. Mm-hmm. I'm a, I know, you know, it, it's all well and good saying that. It was a fantastic goal. He's clearly a wonderful talent. He moves just like Thierry Henry. And it, it was lovely to watch. And it was great to see his movement outside of just the goal that he scored as well. I thought it was really good. He, it, it gives United a different kind of control to the game. He's a great United player because, you know, if you look back at United players, Ronaldo, Rooney... 
Tevez. Te exactly. Players that make you go, that's going to be good. Mm. And that's why he's such a good player, because to some extent, there's an unknown factor there. Mm. You know, I was speaking with Full Time Devils the other day um, and the United People's TV, and they both said, um, yeah, we don't really know how he's going to do in the mm. side. What I would say is, don't, like, don't therefore take it that that's going to happen in every game because that's the danger is we then take that and then we put that pressure on him in every mm. match because it really took the pressure off United when he scored that goal. There was a bit of nerves around that, well, wait a minute, mm. we, are we going to... Yeah. And so with that, don't it take, just taper that excitement. I'm not saying, you know, be as happy as you want. You've won against Liverpool. That's a great result against a pretty poor team. But, you know, just take that back a little bit and say this an 18-year-old kid, you know, you had Di Maria for some great performances last season, suddenly mm. vanished out the side. Memphis didn't look fantastic, and that's another player that they bought young, very promising. It's not going to be every match. And so maybe they need to look at some other things. There are also some other fantastic performances in there. Daily Blint. There was, yeah. But uh, Jack, why, why do you think Liverpool? They've looked quite poor in the last couple of weeks. I, I thought the first couple of games, they looked decent, you know, grinding really? out one all results. Um, I think they've got a few injuries that when Sturridge gets back, they're obviously going to be a better, better team. How do, they, how do they make a formation there, though? Because, I, I mean, I was trying to make a formation yeah. with and without Sturridge. Mm. I, and it's difficult to put mm. Benteke in Sturridge and then fit everyone in behind them. I think yeah. it's going to show how good of a manager Brendan Rodgers is to fit Daniel Sturridge into that team. Because I really like Benteke, but they're going to have to change the whole sort of format of how they play, aren't they? Sturridge, Sturridge? is a very complimentary striker. I mean, he was, yeah. he was fantastic alongside Suarez. And so, mm. I mean, Suarez is also a very thoughtful player, so he probably fitted in well. But I wonder how those two guys sure. and Ibe and a Coutinho, mm. maybe what? Liverpool play a narrow diamond with that and they put Coutinho at the point behind two guys. That's true. I mean, what do you think of, of, of Liverpool, Jack? I mean, obviously, you're Norwich City fan, mm. you know, when Norwich come to play Liverpool, mm. which is soon, right? This week, yeah, yeah. yeah. Then are you are you sort of thinking we can get three points here, or, or do you think, oh, come on, it's Liverpool, they they're, they're, they're one of the best sides yeah. in the league? Well, we went, when they had Suarez, it was obviously he yeah. scored like seven goals in That's three right. games or something against us, absolutely <laughs> ridiculous. Um, and now they've sort of let him go, they've become slightly less scary, I think. Travelling to Anfield is obviously going to be a tough encounter, still scary, still yeah. scary, <laughs> but um, Bournemouth didn't look scared though. No, they didn't, but they, they still, still lost, lost, didn't yeah. they? So, <laughs> but know, they didn't look scared. Mm. So, yeah, we go there with, with a bit of confidence, and I think oh, that's great, isn't it, really? Yeah, no, I agree. Um, I, th I mean, I, I think Liverpool are a little bit worried about losing. Mm -hmm. uh, th their mentality isn't quite there mm. at the moment. Yeah. And it's, I think it's all about mentality at Liverpool, oh. because we know those players in those positions are very capable, uh, apart from Lovren and Skirtle. Um, I mean, you, you know, you felt sorry for Joe Gomez at the weekend because he's had a fantastic mm. start to the mm. season. But essentially, the point the point is made here. Liverpool scored a wonder goal. They got an offside goal. They scored a wonder goal. Those are the only goals that Liverpool have scored this season. Mm. And there has to be more than that. The system has to make more than that. Just score wonder goals all season. Yeah, yeah. Could, yeah. yeah. But you essentially, you don't want that. No. Liverpool want the satisfaction it's of true. scoring good football goals. And they yeah. don't have that right now. They could do with them Anthony Martial. <laughs> Norwich have bounced back, eh? Bouncing back. Norwich City. Lovely old job. They beat Partridge. Bournemouth 3-1. Mm. They beat Bournemouth 3-1, Lawrence. The champions of the championship. That's right. Jack, we come to you first, of course. Should we Why just talk that? about this for the rest of the show? If you like. Yeah, yeah. Free choice. I mean, far away, sir. The last time I saw us play that good was <clears> in the playoff final. And I was just sitting there at the weekend and I was like, I just want this to keep going. <laughs> I, I was actually getting quite emotional watching us because we were just so good. Um, Wesley Houlihan just magnificent. You don't call him Wes, you call him Wesley. Well, he's, he's the Irish Messi, isn't it? So, of course, yeah, yeah. You know, Wesley. Um, but no, we were just so good. But Messi. I think the thing with Bournemouth was, um, because they've been bigged up so much by the media, you know, the, the rags to riches, which mm. is slightly grating on me now a bit. We, I, Get I, a bit jealous. Well, we're beating them, so. Yeah, but, yeah but, there you um, go. Yeah. Because they were picked up down. so much by the media, I, I sort of expected it to be a much tougher game than it was. But on paper, they're not actually that great. With with Mings and Gray Lout, two of their, their best players, they did look fairly average at the weekend. I'm not sure if that was because we were brilliant or Bournemouth was slightly you know, average, but I was just so happy. But one Still thing, am. Norwich is scoring goals, actually. You, we are. I think people maybe looked Literally. at them and thought... Where are the goals mm. going to come from? I mean, I know Jerome's got a little bit of experience there and yeah. um, Redmond's a decent player, but three goals, I mean, it was a way to Sunderland. But still, mm. it's an away three goals Definitely. that you've scored there. I mean, Spurs didn't score that many. 
Um, Swansea didn't uh, against against Sunderland, and then another three goals there. You must be well pleased about. That. Well, since that Sunderland game, they've actually gone on a not decent run of form, but they've, mm. they've been playing okay. And I just thought it, be, it was. Well, it was a Jack Butland the other another week as well. Course, you probably scored yeah. about three I mean, as well. We should have drew, drew against Crystal Palace as well. Mm. Jerome and his overhead kick disallowed. But I think the thing is, the reason we're scoring goals is because of Alex Neal's mentality. He's yeah. such an attacking minded. Um, manager, but the thing is, as well at the back, we're, we're leaking a few goals at the weekend. It sh- we should have never have conceded. We switched off, and that's something that we do need to concentrate on. Yes, we're scoring amazing goals, but when we come against the the big teams, if we switch exactly. off, we're gonna we're gonna concede a lot more because it, we haven't had a very tough start. No disrespect to the teams we've played, but when we come up against the likes of Man City and and Chelsea, maybe um, we're gonna leak goals if we keep switching off. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. You, you don't. I, it, it's hard to characterise Norwich because they're clearly they're, there's a reason they beat Bournemouth and mm. it's almost like there's an intangible factor to it. They've got like an, a naive honesty to them almost, mm. so they're going to come up against mm. certain sides who so they're just going to be like, oh, we'll just outplay you, yeah. and they'll you know we'll outwork you essentially, which is what Norwich can do in the Premier League. But then, like you say, if you're naive against a Man City or mm. a Liverpool, not Liverpool, <laughs> Man City, Man City or an Arsenal. Mm. So you're just wondering where you almost have to look at where they're going to get their points this season and just work up to that. I right? think the thing we've we've probably struggled with this year is the transition between the Championship and the Premier League because you can switch off in the Championship. Mm. The quality of strikers isn't that great. Mm. Um, we we gave a lot of chances away last year because of the way we were playing, but didn't concede that many goals under Alex Neil. Now we've figured out that if we switch off, all all mm. the Premier League strikers need is one chance. Mm-hmm. But luckily, we are scoring more goals than we're conceding at the moment. So it, 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 happy days. But you, <laughs> would you be happy? With the 17th position this season, you yeah, know, is it a case of survive? Yeah, I th- I because think the goal's is. the money, isn't it? As soon as that course. money comes in and you get that, and, and that, mm. but I also don't want to stagnate into like a, a mid-table team who haven't really got much to play for. Where you'd you, rather go down? Well, no, I wouldn't rather go down. I'd right. rather be just, grateful, just really right? push yeah. for it, you know. <laughs> yeah. um, because we've seen with teams before, they just stagnate in, the, in sort of mid-table and it can't yeah. be that exciting to yeah. support. You're after that Europa League spot. I'd love Norwich that. would be great in that Europa League spot, wouldn't <laughs> they? Wouldn't that be fantastic? Get <laughs> Simeon Jackson back, that's why I said. Trip to the Kazakh scar. Absolutely. <laughs> that's what we all look forward to. Theo Walcott is threatening to become prolific as an Arsenal striker. 11 starts, 11 goals, gentlemen. He mm. got one on the weekend. And then, of course, for England, don't he get San Marino, mm. but still scored two goals. Lawrence, what do you think of Walcott up front? The talk's been... Uh, been chatted away about him playing up there. I like him. Um, I think Arsenal probably feel that Giroud's their number one option. But as Walker as a striker. Yeah, um, I like him as a striker. I like his movement. Obviously, we can't always rely on his pace, but he is still a very pacey player within the Premier League. You sort of worry that the longer that he does rely on his pace, will it um, make him more inclined towards injuries? Whereas if he was a, a more thoughtful player, like I think mo- most people think he has the ability to be, then it will probably mean that he has a longer career and has more longevity in him. Um, I, I like him because I think, as a character, he's the kind of player you want representing your club. He's got a, an honesty about him. He has a, a wonderful work ethic. Alan Shearer actually questioned his character, though, Jack, on Match of the Day. He He'll said, do that. He said that, actually, Walker comes across as a very nice guy when he's mm. on the pitch. You can see a bit of that. And he says he needs to be more ruthless and a bit That's more... very prescriptive, though, isn't it? Well, that's what he said. What did you think of I'm that? not sure if a character would would make you score more goals. I think the thing I was really impressed with with Walcott the weekend is because he's sort of based his whole career on his pace and his athleticism, his touch and his finish at the weekend, we haven't really seen that from him before. I don't think it was phenomenal. When, when Thierry Henry was at the club, I think he learned a lot from Henry. Mm. And I think he, he was so clear. I mean, you could see early on in his career, when he got through on goal, he'd do that almost side running thing that Henry mm. does, open up his body, put his arms out in exactly the same way and strike it mm. perfectly around him. And he did exactly the same when Henry returned to the club as the number 12. Mm. So you know, for that reason, that's why I wonder if people don't see Theo as a leader mm. and leading the line, it's because he's not really a leader. He did miss a few chances. Though. He did, and I think that's why Arsenal fans don't think he's a striker. I really yeah. like Giroud. I think Giroud is a fantastic player. There's just so much pressure heaped on him. Sort of, he's, he's not a title-winning striker, is he? But Arsenal fans really want to think he is. Why isn't he a title-winning striker? I don't think he's good enough. Really? I think no, I don't think he's good enough. Oh, we shouldn't really be having this argument about is Walcott a striker, because Arsenal should have signed a striker. You know, they, Interesting. But, but, it's, it's another argument, but we shouldn't... If so Wal- would you prefer to see Walker on the wing? Yeah. I think he's based his whole career on pace. Uh, as you said, he's missed chances. I, I think it's too late in his career to, to move positions from that from a winger into a striker. And I think Arsenal... But Ronaldo did it. 
Walcott isn't in the same sort of league as, as Ronaldo, though. But, it, but what I'm saying is, it's not. Uh, I, I, I agree with you essentially. Mm. I like him as a complementary striker almost. Mm. So you know that you've got someone there that can get your goals. But if not, then Theo's in and around the box. Um, you know, so he's going to create chances there and going to be a bit mischievous. I, th- I, th- I think it's unfair on Walcott to to say this guy needs to score. I don't know, twenty goals a season if we want to push on and and, and do good things this season. Because Arsenal are, Arsenal fans are getting frustrated with just continually finishing in the top four. They want to push on. Mm. I don't think Walcott's that man to do so. But I think he'd be a fantastic sort of complementary striker, as you said, to to a, a better player up front. Yeah, Pass very it. very prescriptive though, aren't we? Like what we want as a striker. <laughs> and and then it's same with Alan Shearer's analysis. Well, you can't be a striker unless you are like this. Mm. And you sort of like well. People are people. Like they're gonna be motivated by whatever. Just because he's not motivated by motivated by the same thing as you doesn't mean he's not gonna be a good striker. And I know he had Ian Wright sitting next to him, and those are two classic strikers, mm. wonderful players, prolific goals, quite prolific goal scorers. Um, they, but that doesn't mean that that's the only motivation. There are other quiet people out there. There are other reserve people. Out there. Uh, well, let us know what you think about Theo Walcott and his striking abilities in the comments below. Well, that's all we've got time for on the Football Daily Weekly this week. Thank you very much for joining us. Jack, absolute pleasure. Where can we find you, Jack, on YouTube? Yeah, uh, youtube.com forward slash talk Norwich City for all Norwich City goodness. Yeah, that's and I'd say, I'd say even more. Don't just mm. restrict it to Norwich City because ultimately you're talking about the great game of football. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it is, it's a great channel. Mm. It's really good. I, I watched it on Transfer Deadline Day and you were just, uh, oh, it, it was fantastic. Well was done. Lawrence, he was just freestyling. Pleasure as always to have you, my good man. Good to have you. And uh, leave your comments in below. Uh, all that kind of stuff, you know the drill, and we'll see you next week.